Hey everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Brad Pinovich here. Got to talk about the pattern late this week because I don't know about you, but my social media was inundated with all of these clickbait single model runs of big snowstorms in the southeast. And if you guys have followed me any length of time, you know I don't play that kind of game. That is a silly thing. I have a folder full of about 40 fantasy storms that could have happened between November and now that never happened. That's just a byproduct of long range deterministic models. But a lot of people share them that don't know what they're talking about, aren't really trained meteorologists. Even some trained meteorologists show up because they're desperate for likes and clicks and shares. Um, when in reality, that's not the way long range forecasting goes. Um, let me talk a little bit about this setup here, because if you've watched me at all, you guys know this is these are my forecasting rules. And I have these rules for a reason, because over the weekend and late last week, we were starting to see this pattern develop. Yes, we were right here seven to ten days out there is a favorable pattern for the southeast for possible winter weather okay today as i'm doing this it's monday we're in this five to seven day range okay um and is it trending up or down i will tell you right now it's probably trending slightly down with the pattern but uh it might be more even and i'm gonna explain why three to five days out so middle of the week we would probably have the type of storm, snow, sleet, ice, kind of better timing. And then one to three days out, I never put a snowfall map out more than three days ahead of time. It's usually more like two, depending on the confidence. So that's kind of the way we play things. So what's actually going on? Well, late this week, we've got a couple fronts coming through. One coming in the middle of the week it looks relatively dry. But as we get towards the weekend, we've got a big trough developing over the eastern half of the country. And low pressure is going to develop somewhere on the southeast coast. Where that develops and the strength right now is still uncertain. Um, when you see these models put out like, oh, huge snowfall, there's equal chances that it's nothing. Um, so you can't read too much into it. But what I really look at is the pattern. Is the pattern favorable for cold air and low pressure? And there is a pattern there for low pressure moving up the coast. And you could see it there. It's very vague, though. Where does this low form? For me, generally, what I look for is, is the low anywhere in this vicinity? And do we have cold air coming in? We have those ingredients, but there's a lot of a lot of questions about where that low forms. And I'll show you one of the best forecasting tools we have are ensembles. And ensembles work great because they show you the range of possibilities and not a single run, which is what you see shared on social media all the time. So if we go into Friday, Saturday, you can see the the, the uh, ensembles. We might stop this right here have a whole bunch of low pressure systems. This shows you where they could form. Now, there's only a couple. I keep grabbing the wrong thing here that are actually favorable for snow. And that's these right here. All of these other ones, like 75% of them, are too far offshore, at least for inland areas like the Western Carolinas for potential snowfall. So when you look at the long range outlook for Friday, Saturday, you are seeing a 10 to 30% chance of some wintry precip near the coast. And why is that? Because it looks like the low is going to be really far offshore, which means if there is going to be wintry weather, it's most likely going to be on this northwest side closer to the coast. If the lows former closer to the coast, then that puts the western Carolinas more in line. But you kind of see the uncertainty here and what's going on. Not a single model run is showing uh, a specific total for our area. It's more an overall pattern. So when I look at the ensembles for Charlotte, and I'll show you these real quickly, I think these are really useful. Um, the European ensembles, which are 51 simulations, we take them all, you average them out, and you could see the average snow output is about a half an inch, less than a half an inch. But I also want you to notice uh, it's not just the ones that have snow, it's how many don't have snow. So that's that's pretty weak set up here, you know. So when people share stuff on social media, they grab the highest one, they share it, and they don't tell you about the 49 other ones <laughs> that show next to nothing. So let's look at the GFS, which is the model that was shared at nauseam, it's even less excited about this storm. It actually has trace amounts. When you see zero and gray there, that means a trace. But you could see one of these bogus runs, like you know E12, it's called, is the ensemble member, had 11 inches. So what you were seeing over the weekend is somebody sharing this single output and not telling you about these, and also not telling you about all these, or all the ones in the Canadian <laughs> ensemble. They're withholding information from you. They're using something that gets you excited and not sharing with you the truth. I mean, it's like any scam online. Um, if, it, if it's something you want to be true, you're more likely to believe it, even if you secretly don't. It's like those coupons you see, you know, or those scams for like restaurants. Win Chick-fil-A for life. Uh, we're giving it away. Click on this link. We're going to give it away every Sunday for the rest of your life. And then you realize, 
Okay, Chick Fil A is not open on Sundays. Okay, um, so you got to use a little bit of in, in, intuition here. So let's look at the model blend for this system. Let's take every model, every ensemble member, and let's blend it out. What's the what's the the chance of seeing snow? There you go. It's around a half an inch, and it's really light amount. So there's still something there. It's just not the crazy wild totals you're hearing. So. I always go back to, whoops, we'll go back to this, my rules. We're in that five to seven day range. Right now it's kind of trending down a little bit because the low looks like it's gonna be further offshore. At least the majority of the guidance is showing that, but we're still watching it. It's still something to keep an eye on for later this week, but it's not gonna be these epic snowfall amounts you're seeing online. That's just not reality. So I'll keep an eye on it throughout the week, but I wanted to do a quick update and vlog today to show you that it is a pattern we've been watching since last week. Even when we had snow, I talked about, hey, watch next weekend. The pattern's favorable. Now we're in this range. It's trending slightly down, but not straight down. Um, and then as we get through tonight, tomorrow, we'll see the next trends in the guidance. If the lows start shifting back towards the coast, then we can start getting a little bit more excited um, by the weekend. But overall, hey, this is a crazy pattern to be in with. We've got snow twice in one week, and we're talking about it again the following week. So we'll take that for what it's worth, because it's been a crazy swing in the pattern, flipping from a super warm, record warm December to now more typical winter weather here in January.